Button is pushed. Got quite a bit of activity happening in the chat already this evening. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. Stream quality excellent, as it always is when I go from the office. I see there's some discussion happening already of the weekly one-shots in the chat. Yep, some people have been talking about it and playing it over the last couple days. I see a, so a number of uh, familiar faces. We got Gaffa Dream, Chris Ronway, Napycross, Cytosine. Good to see everybody. Is everybody off work this week? Um, I know some people are off, some people aren't off. We're kind of half on, half off. Um, I've been working at least a couple hours a day doing things like checking sales and trying to get back to... Uh, um, you know, we get a ton. Of, we've actually been getting, you know, because the game is on sale, we've been getting a lot of new players, um, and then also people trying to update the game that have been having some issues. Um, so I've been trying to make sure that I keep uh, keep on those tickets, because um, even though we are technically closed this week, um, I know how frustrating it is when you send in a, a support ticket to somebody and don't hear back. Uh, so I'm doing my best to keep on that. Uh, but with the kids out of school, I've been trying to play with them as much as possible. So that's good times. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and or other holiday <laughs> that you like to celebrate or not or not <laughs> you know it's certainly uh that's fine as well um we had a pretty good one in the handle household lego is all the rage uh in our house i was actually just telling john that my son we got him a lego um general grievous which is like probably almost a foot tall um, and it's totally posable, and it's it's just amazing. Um, and he's been loving that. Um, I took my daughter to see Star Wars yesterday, uh, and she is in love with Rey. She's already decided that she wants to be her for Halloween next year, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. And she cool. and, and yeah, and she immediately wanted me. Um, I started listening to the soundtrack in the car because I bought it last week, and she said. Um, she made me put it on. We have, I have a bunch of my old iPhones that I've basically turned into iPods for the kids so they can each have music in their room. And they've all said, like, oh, I want the new Star Wars music on my iPod. So it's very exciting. <laughs> all right. Well, that was probably enough small talk to start us off. Welcome, everybody, to the Handle Labra live stream of Sentinels of the Multiverse. If you're just joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. We know we've got a lot of new people trying the game uh, out this week because of the sale and because of the holidays. Uh, a lot of people are probably getting Steam gift cards or iTunes gift cards uh, and trying them out on our wonderful little game here. So thank you and welcome. Uh, the goal of these streams, if you've never been here before, is to show you how to play the game as well as cover some strategies that can help you win. We are the developers, so you can always be sure to get some insight uh, into the process, the development process, as well as maybe even see some stuff before anyone else. Uh, right now, we are going through, uh, as we typically do in, in advance of a new expansion pack, as we work on stuff, uh, we show off the new decks as we finish them on the stream, and we will be doing that tonight as well with some new Shattered Timelines content. Uh, the game always uh, uh, the game does include a tutorial that covers the basics, but we always do our best on the stream here to explain exactly what we're doing, when we do it, and why. And depending on how long it takes for us to win or lose, we sometimes play more than one full game in a session. Sessions are aimed to be uh, about an hour and a half. As I'm sure you all know, the, the game is available on uh, iPad, Android tablets, as well as PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam. And you get more information as well as see everything that's on sale this week uh, at sentinelsdigital.com. Goppa Dream good. says, I hope Jeremy has a teleprompter in his office that he reads this blurb off of. Uh, it's not really a teleprompter. I just open up uh, um, uh, a <laughs> G-Doc that I have. And I, I like to embellish it. I don't read it rote. Uh, you know, I, I throw some stuff in uh, to, to keep it a little fresh. That's part uh, of the program. That's part of the program, exactly. That's why you guys tune in. It's not just uh, to see us play the game, but you, you tune in for the color commentary, as they say. So there's some other news in Sentinel's Land. Yes. So what is the other news in Sentinel's Land, John? Uh, Greater Than Games has posted an update about the uh, shipping status of Villains of the Multiverse. So uh, it is being shipped as we speak, basically. Well, probably not right now. I don't know. I could, maybe they're working late. I imagine they are. Yeah, they might be. At uh, least Jody. Yeah. Um, so they are, I'm sure, uh, working around the clock, uh, getting all those packages shipped out. Uh, which is cool. And so to match that, we've uh, 
put out our updates for Sentinel Sidekick on both iOS and Android. So as soon as you get your Villains of the Multiverse, you will be able to play, uh, keep track of everything with Sentinel Sidekick. So. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so that has actually, um, we finished that up a couple of weeks ago, and then we were basically just waiting for uh, for the official shipping notification before making it live. And so, uh, as John says, it is now live. Go ahead and get that. Um, I do know that they pre-sold more copies of Villains of the Multiverse than they pre-sold of just about any other uh, expansion. So that I know that there's thousands of copies of, of Villains of the Multiverse uh, flying through the mail and flying through the air and on trucks, uh, working their way towards Wonderful Sentinels fans. I know that, um, you know, Vengeance Mode has been very popular, but there's only been just the five uh, the five Vengeance-style villains available up until now. So this is really going to add a lot, I think, to the, to the tabletop game and, of course, the video game eventually, uh, that there's now another huge chunk of, of uh, Vengeance-style villains that you can mix and match, especially because, you know, when you get a new regular expansion that comes with four new villains, that's four new challenges. But when you've got five Vengeance villains plus, what is it, ten in villains? I think it's a ten additional Vengeance-style villains. That's 15 uh, that you can then mix and match. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's a huge way to mix and match. And the same way, so it's basically the same way that, you know, you can compose all sorts of different teams from the various heroes. Now you can compose all sorts of interesting teams in the villains. And uh, that should be pretty interesting. I'm sure my copy is, I have not received a shipping notification yet, but I don't know if I end up lower on the, on the totem pole because, uh, <laughs> because I'm not uh, one of the people. I'm just one of the, the helpers. <laughs> <laughs> but I expect to get it pretty soon, and I, like, I love to look through the cards and, and just sort of see how they play and stuff. So that should be good. All right, so. I, I won't have it for a while. But you pre-ordered it, right? Is it getting shipped basically to Jean-Marc? Uh, to a friend of mine uh, in Halifax, he's getting the group buy that we did, which mm. is like 15 copies. So he's going nice. to get a giant box. That's awesome. <laughs> or, or two. Yeah, combining it to, to save on the shipping. Good call. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they have great flat rate shipping for Canada, so. All right, so new game tonight. Let's go. Uh, so tonight we're going to be showing off, as uh, as you guys know, we are going to be showing off some more Shattered Timelines. Uh, and tonight we're going to be showing off a different type of villain. Uh, we're going to be showing off the Dreamer. For those who don't know, um, the Dreamer plays very differently than just about any other villain in the game. Because um, she starts off with six hit points. And if she ever is reduced to zero or fewer hit points, uh, you lose. So unlike the villains that you need to wail on, um, or in the case of someone like uh, Citizen Dawn, that you need to, you know, if you flip her over, you've got to bring her back because she's immune and then continue to wail on her. You know, each villain has their own mechanics, but this villain's mechanics are very different than almost any other. Uh, your you goal want to is start a game and put it on the screen. Yeah, it's I've, I've got it up now. I'm looking. We're looking at the Dreamer's card right now. So okay. basic. Oh, you wanna yeah. Start I always a player game. Yeah, I always start in a single player. Sorry about that. <laughs> I always just pick the first thing there. All right, so I am, uh, do you see me there? Yep. All right, so let's bring her up again. So the Dreamer, the start of the game, Dreamer enters play. The Dreamer dreams side up. Cards are revealed from the top of the deck until H. Projection cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain deck, which is shuffled. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no projection cards in play, H. Hero ongoing cards are destroyed and the Dreamer flips. Whenever the Dreamer would be dealt damage by an environment card, the players may redirect it to the hero card with the lowest HP. If the Dreamer is reduced to zero or fewer HP or otherwise destroyed, the heroes lose the game. And then let's flip, oop, hang on. Let's flip her over and see what happens when she flips. Uh, whenever a projection card is destroyed, it is placed under this card. At the start of the villain turn, if there are H times two cards under this card, the heroes win. So that is your win condition, is flip her over and then start piling her projections underneath her, her character card. Uh, same thing, you can still uh, redirect environment damage. And the same that if she's ever reduced to zero or fewer or destroyed, you lose. At the end of the villain turn, the Dreamer deals each non-villain target H-2 psychic damage. Then the top H-2 cards from the villain deck are played. Uh, I have played her uh, twice now in our game in testing, and it was both of them were, were some of the most fun games I've played. There, it's, it's a really interesting new way to have to think about how to play Sentinels. Uh, so we're going to play that for you tonight, and you guys can see how that, how that works. Yeah, uh, you definitely have to watch out for area damage. Uh, that's not something you can just willy-nilly hit all non-hero targets or all villain targets. 
exactly. And actually, one of the ones, one of the games that I played, I was playing with Tempest, and I did do some area effect damage where I was hitting her, and I actually got her down to two hit points, but I managed to get some cards that, that would also allow me to heal her. Um, so yeah, it's one of those weird situations where you may actually be trying to actively heal the villain. So yeah, that's interesting. All right, where shall we play this evening? Do we want to show off, uh, do we want to play in like the block again or maybe something different? I think we're going to still save time cataclysm, show that off in another future, uh, stream. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, we'll let the, uh, the chat pick where we play. So, uh, first environment other than time cataclysm to get three votes, uh, will be where we play the dreamer this evening. And it looks like Migrant P has already picked the Wraith as his first. Uh, in the in the interest of having the ability to possibly heal uh, the villain, I think I'm going to take the Argent Adept this evening. Cool. Uh, let's see. And actually, while John is thinking about that, um, for those of you who don't know the story implications of the Dreamer... Um, Actually, here's a little trivia. So who knows who the Dreamer is? <laughs> I'm sure there's many people who are in the chat right now who know who the Dreamer is. Yep, the Gaffa Dream has already, has already called it. Yes, the Dreamer, uh, as, as this is shattered timelines and the timelines are mixed, the Dreamer is a young visionary from a different timeline. And so um, it's, it's basically sh it's her psychicness that she has kind of gone run amok, as it were. Indeed. Yeah. And so that's why you can see that uh, Visionary is the uh, nemesis here. I wonder, should I play the Visionary? That might be worthwhile with some deck management so we can deal with the projections. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's see here. We've got... Time Cataclysm, Time Cataclysm, okay, Realm of Discord, Silver Gulch, Silver Gulch, Block, Realm of, looks like Realm of Discord, yep, looks like three I Realm think, of Discords, unless I'm or, reading that or wrong. Or Silver Gulch, I see more Silver Gulch, but. Alright, the next one, Silver Gulch, or, or Realm of Discord, will be the, the deciding vote. Uh, someone wants Visionary up front, Let's see, so we'll go ahead and put Visionary up front. They want to see the special dialogue. Ah, yes, of course. Gulch, there it is. All right. Silver Gulch it is. And I know there are people who are ADD about the chat bubble, so I'll clear that. And here we are. So we've got the Dreamer against Visionary, Wraith, Arjun Adept, and Dark Watch Mr. Fixer. And here we go. I also will mention that um, the artwork that you're going to see in here for the Visionary is artwork from the card game. We do not yet have uh, the final artwork from Adam for, for the villains, so uh, just be advised. I have foreseen the consequences of this conflict, and you'll notice that the Dreamer doesn't say anything because she's sleeping. All right. <laughs> So let's see what we got here. Visionary starts with a mind spike, precognition, and two rest the minds. Those might come in handy if we get some difficult projections. The Wraith has got a grappling hook, an impromptu invention, infrared eyepiece, and suit yourself. Uh, Arjunet starts with a punk news drum, arcane cadence, inventive preparation, and zoo's bell. A couple instruments. And Dark Watch Mr. Fixer's got a bloody knuckles, dual crowbars, hoist chain, and riveting crane. All right, let's get started. Ron Raptor is wondering why I'm playing Dark, Watch, Dark Watch Mr. Fixer, and the answer is because he's awesome. So he maybe is that. you will learn, learn some things about how to play him. All right, already got two Whippicorns, Illusory Demon, Grotesque Arachnoid, and the Toy Master. Very much if the Whippicorns are keeping him from dealing damage forever, but we'll see. Yep. All right, actually, while this is dealing damage, I'm actually going to back out and read these so real quick. So Whippicorn, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the non-villain target with the highest HP two melee damage. Target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of the next villain turn. So that's a bummer. To, uh, Illusory Demon, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the non-villain target with the highest HP four infernal damage. When this card is destroyed, destroy one hero ongoing card. Another Whippicorn, 
A grotesque arachnoid at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the three non-villain targets with the highest HP, two toxic damage each. And then the Toy Master. At the start of the villain turn, this card deals the non-villain target with the highest HP X Psychic, where X is the number of equipment cards in play plus one. Very interesting. All right, so let's go back to this damage. Who is considered the highest HP? Probably Wraith. Uh, you want Wraith to not be able to deal damage? Oh, I guess, well, yeah. Okay, and this damage is actually coming from the Whippicorn, not from the Dreamer, so we'll, yeah, yes. that's fine. Definitely should pick Visionary there. And we're all gonna get hit by the Arachnoid. And the Toy Master does damage at the start, so. Yep. All right. All right. So, so let's let's once again. I know I read it before, but let's go ahead and just make sure that everyone's clear on her uh, her flip uh, scenario. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no projection cards in play, four hero ongoings are destroyed, and the dreamer flips. So if we can get if we can wipe the board of projections, she'll flip over, which is the first step. We have to do that before we can win. So yeah. So similar to um, Citizen Don or Grand Warlord Voss, you often want to prioritize which of the minions you want to deal with. Uh, there are no dark heroes out, which is a damage reduction one, so I would normally prioritize him. Uh, with these ones out, I definitely want, would prioritize the Whippicorns, because yeah. they stop us from dealing damage. And um, the Illusory Demon is also pretty rough. He deals a lot of damage. Yeah, so I was um, thinking, do we maybe want to um, like rest the mine on the Grotesque Arachnoid, maybe? I would rest the mine on a Whippicorn. Oh, okay. Because then you can basically throat jab one of the other projections with it. Ah, okay. I like that idea. So let's do that. We'll, we'll, uh, uh, the first, I would pick the, the first whip of corn. <laughs> I just picked one. Well, yeah. it matters. Oh, it does? Well, yes. Unless we're planning to kill the illusory demon, I would whip, uh, the whip, I would have the whip of corn. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because in terms of the, uh, the, the order of the damage. All right. Let's do that. Yeah. Now. Or I would have him whip a corn the other whip of corn. So the order definitely matters here, which one you pick. All right, so let's rest the mine on Whippicorn A. And does any, I, I believe everybody kind of had some decent cards. So can the Visionary enlighten herself or does anybody else really want it? I mean, Arjun Adams yeah. is going to Arcane Caden, so he doesn't need it. Yeah, Mr. Fixer won't be able to do much on his turn, but he can play something for next time. Uh... And the Wraith has Impromptu Invention. So, yeah, uh, feel free to go yourself. All right. Maybe find a Twist the Ether or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Get a Mental Divergence and a Mind Spike. And she doesn't have any ongoing cards, so Mental Divergence is not super useful in this fight. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I discarded a Mind Spike and drew a Mind Spike, so. Lou Dolphin asks, would a Whippicorn whip a corn if a Whippicorn could whip a corn? <laughs> All right. I think I am going to use that infrared. I I'm going to get an infrared eyepiece and a utility belt going. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's the better one. How much corn could whip a corn whip if a whip a corn whip could whip corn? I like that. <laughs> that's good stuff. All right, so we have another grotesque arachnoid or let's a, look a at that. ape. Yeah, let's take a look at that ape. At the start of each hero's turn, this card deals that hero character card two energy damage. When this card is destroyed, destroy one equipment card. So he's pretty annoying. He's yep. easy to kill, but um, he's annoying. Uh... As long as we're able to kill him. I think you could mind spike him on your turn. Or we could just have the Whippicorn kill him. True. So, uh, I'm going to go for the ape. If you're in a situation where you can't get rid of the ape and he has like a damage boost, he's really, really annoying. Yeah. Or if there's a couple of them. All right. So, as I said, uh, with our genetic, I'm going to go ahead and Arcane Cadence. Uh, if there's any newbies out there, Arcane Cadence basically lets me draw five cards and then do one uh, hand, top of deck, bottom of deck, trash, and play. So it's uh, and, and I drew a second Arcane Cadence, so I can basically blow, blow through everything here. So let's see. Um, I already have two instruments, but I don't know. The only song I have is Inventive Preparation. 
which I don't love. And there's the syncopated onslaught. Select the two, two targets until the start of your next turn. Increase damage dealt by those targets by one. <laughs> Alright, well, first, first things first. We'll put Vernal Sonata in my hand. And I think I'm going to put Syncopated Onslaught on the top. Is that what I want to do? Let me think here. Actually, yes. I think... Oh, yeah. See, Vernal Sonata is each hero target. It's not pick targets. That's a song that lets you pick targets. Uh, mm hmm Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to put Syncopated Onslaught on the top. Uh, I'll put the second... Yeah, I'll put the Renal Sonata on the bottom. I definitely play Arjunet differently than John, so I'm sure he's seething when he sees some of the choices I make with my uh, Arcane Cadences, but that's okay. Alright, so we got uh, two Inspiring Supertonics. There's that Syncopated Onslaught, Isidar's Horn, and a Counterpoint Bulwark. That is selected two targets. Reduce damage dealt to those targets by one. I will only see if you don't play one of those inspiring super tonics. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that's that's a no brainer right there. I think I'm gonna uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the syncopated onslaught. Uh, that's the reduced damage. I think I'll top deck the counterpoint bulwark. Yeah, you can actually use that to keep the dreamer from being damaged. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, good thinking. Right, right, right. Then you can right. do a little area damage. All right. Who wants to use a power? Uh, there's not a whole lot up right now. Um, we could do... I mean, Dark, Mr. Fixer makes no sense because he, he, he can't, can't deal, deal damage. damage. Right. I mean, you could reduce uh, the next... Uh, damage to Wraith by another two, or I could have Visionary go, go digging for some more. I think Visionary is the best bet. Yeah. Yeah, when she flips, she will destroy four ongoing cards. Yeah, it's so. kind of like a big reset button in some ways. All right, so he draws Cerebral Hemorrhage and a Mass Levitation. Cerebral Hemorrhage, is that the everything? That's up to three targets. Okay, so I'm not going to get rid of that one, I don't think. See, mass levitation until start your next turn. Reduce damage dealt by environment targets by three. Hmm. Yeah, I just need to get rid of that mental divergence. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I don't see us using it unless you're going for a rest of the mind back or something like that. But uh, Argent Adept can help you do that too. All right, I think it is going to be dual crowbars and then not use a power. Draws a pipe wrench. Oh, an early loss in the past. Danger zone. Uh oh. Yeah, so we've only got those two in the trash. Do we have some ongoing destruction? Well, I just threw away my ongoing destruction. Or my It's not an ongoing card. Right, right. I'm sorry, environment destruction, excuse me. The Wraith can destroy it. Okay. Alright, so the whip of corn comes out. Do we do we wanna who do we wanna neuter? For this well, who, who of us has the highest HP? Well, the Illusory Demon is going to hit Mr. Fixer, and then the Whippicorn would hit one of the other characters. So, or if we if we block the Illusory Demon, then the Whippicorn would hit Mr. Fixer, which is gonna, would going to be pretty annoying if he can never deal damage. Yeah, I think yeah. we can we can hit the other Whippicorn. Yeah, then... I think if we hit the other Whippicorn. Or the treacherous, like, yeah, I, I would say hit the other Whippicorn, then we don't have... A... Alternatively, yeah. so yeah, we or we could hit the treacherous ape so, or the arachnoid. Because the Whippicorn, we can have him hit Argent Adept, who doesn't care because he's not dealing damage. That's true, yeah, because they're all tied at 22. Yeah, so we want to save the most damage, we can hit the arachnoid. It's probably the best bet. because yeah, that deals three non-villain targets, so yeah, let's do that. All right, so we'll hit the arachnoid... Whip a corn. It's himself and the visionary. And then Argent Adept will take this. 
Aha, with the coin prevented. Okay. And there's that treacherous ape hitting me. So I could, let's see, I could Cerebral Hemorrhage, get rid of the ape, and do some damage to maybe both of the Whippicorns, or one of the Whippicorns and the Grotesque Arachnoid or something. Yep, I would go for that. Hemorrhage. Yeah. So let's get rid of the treacherous. Definitely take out the ape. Yeah, definitely take out the ape. And if you whittle down the... Uh, I would whittle down the other two, uh, the demon and the arachnoid, so Mr. Fixer can take them out. All right, unfortunately, uh, when you hit the ape, it has to, you have to lose an equipment yeah. card. So what do you think? It's all your guys, so what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the utility belt because I have another one in my hand. All right, so... Yeah, the yeah I think we want to make use of that whippicorn, even though it's the visionary asserting herself like it's super useful. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Block something else. And we'll hit the arachnoid. And again, I, I ask now, does anybody care for some enlightenment? Um, I think um, I'm pretty happy with the, the wraith or fixer. Yeah, one of your two, so you pick it. Uh, let's go for Fixer, because I don't really want that style. And if I get a different one, I might prefer it. Draws a tire iron and a oh, bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles is great because I can destroy them. So Yeah, that's that that's the unsung hero of the Dark Watch Mr. Fixer, is getting out that bloody knuckles, using it, and then destroying it. Yeah. Dark Watch Mr. Fixer really is all about um, like a cadence of of cards. You wanna have uh, you want to basically be changing what you're doing all the time, and his destruction lets you do that. Um, you know, so I can keep the, it. It sort of almost enforces uh, what Mr. Fixer is best at, which is changing what he does all the time uh, and being light on his feet. So, all right, I, uh, I'm not concerned about lost in the past this turn. Uh, right? Yeah, is next round. And we're concerned about it. So I'm going to continue. Well, here, let's actually bring that up in case anybody's not familiar with it. Lost in the Past. When this card enters play, discard the top two cards in the environment deck. At the end of the environment turn, if there are no cards in the environment trash, the characters are lost in time. Game over. At the start of the environment turn, put the top card of the environment trash on the bottom of the environment deck. So basically, this turns the trash into a countdown. Yeah. But it has two in it right now. Yeah. So we're okay. Um, and if, you, you know, if environment targets come out and they get destroyed, they go in the trash. So that's okay. Right, or if uh, uh, Sustain the Portal comes out, we could be okay, so... Yeah, all right, I'm going to continue using the Wraith to take a look at the villain deck here. To Granite Oni or Toothberry. All right, let's take a look at those. Granite Oni, reduce damage dealt to this card by one. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the non-villain target with the lowest HP to melee damage. Not fun. And Toothberry, at the end of the villain turn, each player discards one card. Excuse me, then this card uh, deals any hero target whose player has no cards in their hand, three toxic damage. Interesting. I Normally, I would. I don't like both of these. The Tooth Fairy discarding is annoying, but we do actually have plenty of cards uh, due to some extra draws that have been going around. So maybe... I'm okay with the Tooth Fairy. It's easy to kill. Yeah, it's easy to kill. It's only three HP, so... Yeah. All right. It's also super creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it is very, very creepy, yes. <laughs> don't show your kid that card. Yeah, especially because, like, you know, kids, the Tooth Fairy is a really fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely don't want them uh, sub sub sublimating that idea onto something disgusting and crazy. All right, so let's see here. I've got the drum, which is useless right now. I've got the bell. Usefulless. I like that word. <laughs> Usefulless. <laughs> uh, I could get out counterpoint bulwark and then prep for maybe the bell next turn. Or I could just Vernal Sonata. Do we have enough in our trash to make Vernal Sonata useful at this point, you think? The Wraith has something she wants, but I don't know if anyone else does. Yeah, I mean, Visionary... I mean, I could get back a Cerebral Hemorrhage. That wouldn't be terrible. Yeah, I mean, a Syncopated Onslaught on Mr. Fixer is pretty rad. Yeah. I can take out that other Whippicorn in one hit. I'll do that, and then... Um prep to use the bell maybe next turn uh, but for the moment do I want to yeah should I syncopate onslaught right away or should I inspiring supertonic 
I think I would use Incapacitate kind of Onslaught. I don't think there's another power that's super useful right now. All right, so we'll definitely do Fixer. And who else is dealing a lot of damage right now? Well, Wraith probably would be the best choice. Are you planning on getting out that uh, throwing knives next turn, or what are you thinking? You could do the Wraith, or you could do the uh, the Whipicorn that has four health. Ah, uh, yes. Or, if we do... or the or the Visionary, basically. So with the Whipicorn, you could have him kill the Illusory Demon uh, with his attack. With the Visionary, you could have her kill the Whipicorn and not hit herself from the rest of the mind. Yeah, I prefer that. Yeah, so I, so we'll I want to choose the visionary. Yeah, we'll do visionary. And she can like do a, do a mind spike or something on her turn if that makes sense or yeah. something. All right, so as we discussed, bloody knuckles. Um, and actually, one thing that is can be handy to do with Dark Watch Mr. Fixer is not use your power the first turn so that you do get another card that you can That you can keep out, keep. basically, yeah. yeah. Um, or destroy someone else's cards. Uh, it's, it can be totally valuable to have someone else's card be destroyed. Yeah, yours. Sim similar to the way that Unity works a lot of times, where sometimes you'll you know you'll eat up someone else's equipment to power her getting her bots out. You know, Dark Watch, Mister Fixer. You know, this would be a situation where, like, say the Visionary had kept. Um, what was that? I always forget the names of cards. If she had kept out uh, the Mental Divergence that we're not really using, sometimes I could, I could, you know, if I didn't have any other good plays, I could get that out specifically as fodder for Dark Watch Mr. Fixer. Yeah, so I can kill this whip coin with the first hit from Dual Crowbars, which is awesome. <laughs> nice. Seven damage. Uh, and then 11 damage to something. <laughs> Slightly overkill. Uh, so the chat says, this little girl's got some messed up dreams, and Cytosine says her parents accidentally gave her both NyQuil and Sudafed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff right there. I think the Toy Master is not doing too much, so I'm going to hit the Arachnoid. The Toy Master will do three damage, or four, I guess he'll do four damage to the non-hero target, non-villain target with the highest. The Arachnoid is going to do two to three targets, so I think the Arachnoid is worse still uh so it's a bit of an overkill but it's happening <laughs> yeah just a bit <laughs> 11 damage to a four hp villain card but there's no big villain to attack so Exa yeah exactly there's no one to focus damage on so a temporal event so we'll be able to sustain the portal here nice um All right, so when this card enters play, one player may discard one card. If they do, discard the top card of the environment deck. And then at the end of the environment turn, uh, everyone has to take two energy damage, uh, including... Uh, Mr. Fixer can discard one. All righty. Yeah, that's, that's going to go after the Dreamer, as yep. you were probably going to say. Yep. Uh, any benefit to order here? I don't think so. No, I think choose for me. Well, the order is uh, its going to redirect to the hero with the lowest HP, so we could probably control that slightly, but uh, it's, pro it's probably fine. It's going to go to the visionary. Yeah, I'm happy to take it. Wraith avoids thanks to her stealth, but now this means that the Toy Master deals her the full damage. Out comes that Tooth Fairy, as we knew it would. And let's see, Whippicorn. I think we're once again going to go for the Arjun Adept here, yeah? Oh, but right, we're resting the mind. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which one we pick here. And... and yeah, so he could destroy the... It could destroy the Illusory Demon, uh, which probably makes sense. Uh, yep, I'm fine with that. And now we've got two, three, and three... Uh, you know what? Um, what am I doing on my turn? You I could can... destroy rest the mind. Yeah, as I was gonna say, I'll rest. I'll I'll destroy rest the mind, and then I'll just mind spike the whippicorn. Yeah, or we have the Mister Fixer can kill it or whatever. Oh, okay, so. sure. And All right. Discovered. So let's see. I think I'm actually gonna get rid of that mass levitation. I almost never use it. Probably not a bad card to keep this in this is a good environment. environment. To use it in. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 
Good, I can even play uh, throwing knives on my turn. Will be handy. Let's see here. I think, I don't think it's very likely that I'm gonna use the drum. So I think I'm gonna get, or I guess, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the drum. Cause I think I'm probably gonna silver shadow on my turn. Yeah, you do have Twist the Ether. Um, what are you thinking? Twist the Ether on uh, well, Mr. Mr. Fixer, Fixer can take care of two of the projections. And... Um, I would Twist the Ether on the Dreamer. She does a lot of damage on the other side. and She's going to be flipping over soon. Uh, yeah, okay. So well, let's see here. So, so who's going to take out... You're going to take out... What, the Toy Master and the Tooth Fairy, so we just need to do two damage to get rid of the, the Whippicorn. Yeah, I don't know if we have... Uh, actually, the Arjun Adept can do a damage to... Because the, uh, the Wraith can chip them down by one each, and so the Arjun Adept can uh, use Silver Shadow to accompany the Onslaught to get rid of it. So, we, yeah, I think we can get rid of all of them without the Visionary needing to do anything. All right, so so what are we thinking? Twist the ether on vision on Dreamer. Yeah, she's gonna be doing piles of damage on the other side. So, oh, she will destroy ongoings. Do we have enough to uh, to soak that? That's a question. We don't, so it might not be worth playing that unless other people are gonna play ongoing cards. Um, well, when I silver shadow, I'm gonna be able to put out another. Song, yeah, but she's going to destroy probably. four. So that would be two. I'd have three. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. So we might want to play something else. Instead. Yeah, I think I'll just precognition. That's a good idea. Yeah. I don't think she shuffles. Yeah. All right, select a card to put on top of the deck. Viol Let's take a look at that Violent Nightmares. One shot. Reveal cards from the top of the villain deck until two projection cards are revealed. Put them into play. Discard the other revealed card. Shuffle the villain trash in the villain deck. Now, this, obviously, you know, like, okay, we could put the Granite Oni on top, which would put out one projection, but if we are going to finish everything off this turn, she's going to flip at the beginning of her next turn, and then she could play Violent Nightmares, which will get out two projection cards, which is actually what we want. Uh, because we need to get out projections so that we can kill them to put them underneath her. Right? Am I am I true. that correctly? It's true. It's dangerous, but it's true. It's dangerous, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, again, we now we're talking once again about Jeremy's play style, which is, you know, put out as much as I can so that I can deal as much damage as I can kind of a thing. Um, would you just do the Granite Oni or would you do the Violent Nightmares? Uh, I would do the Granite Oni because then I know what I'm going to get. Yeah. The Violent Nightmares... Uh, we're more likely to get like a couple dark heroes. They yeah, and that's out. we have not seen a dark hero yet. Actually, let's go ahead and open that up so we can see what a dark hero is since we've talked about him. Increase damage dealt by villain targets by one. Reduce damage dealt two projection cards by one. Yeah, so so if we got out two of those right away, that would be a real super bummer. All right, fair enough. We'll do Granite Oni. I mean, it's nice to get more projections out, but when there's too many out at once, you get swamped. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so let's see. Who can we enlighten? Anybody need anything? See if Either the chat has any different opinion on that. So uh, let's see. I mean, visionary. I, I have enough stuff to do each turn. So yeah, I think so do others. So um, it's up to you. I might do the Arjun add up just to see what I can get. Sure. I, have, I have enough stuff to do, but um, who knows? Maybe I'll get something awesome. Well, you'll have another play off of your Silver Shadow. Uh, yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So I get an Alacritus. Oh, and an Arcane Cadence. Perfect. So I'll do that. Let's see. Alacritus Subdominant. That is, one player may play a card now, and the accompany is you may use a power now if you do destroy this card. Uh, I think I'm sticking with my Silver Shadow. And I might use my extra one to get out. Uh, let's see what is. Alacritus Subdominant is a Harmony. Maybe get out the bell, and then I can. I don't know, but I'm gonna arcade cadence. Yeah, I think you I'm don't have to play arcane cadence. It's not a card you always have to play. <laughs> I know, but it's it's. I I just I love having more. 
cards, more options. See what yeah, but see often what? it comes pulls up cards you don't want. So, all right. Throwing knives. I'll do my in. Well, yeah. We don't need to do infrared eyepiece because you already did. Um, look at the top right. And I think we're okay with the granadoni. So Pro Farmitage uh, is talking about getting mints in the weekly one shot. Uh, if you're playing on Steam, they are stored in your Steam cloud, so they will be synced uh, to your, you know, your Steam account. So if you wipe your computer and reinstall, then yes, you will still have it. Yep, it stayed in the same place that your like uh, continue game is. All right, so we're definitely going to start with Silver Shadow. And do I want to regain two HP or deal one target one sonic damage? I, am I uh, wiping that whippicorn? We need you to kill the whippicorn. Yep. Whether you do it now or later, it needs to happen on your turn. All right, whippicorn is done. And I'm going to play a card. And I think I'm going to play. Subdominant might be good, depending yeah, that's on what, what I was people thinking. Like to play. I, let me get out the subdominant. And then that's a harmony, right? Yeah, so I could do the bell next turn. Does anybody have a card they want to play or a power they want to use? Otherwise, I'm going to syncopate it on slot. Well, if you play, you can play another ongoing, and then we'll be able to at least soak some. I don't know if that's worth it, though. So I, four yeah, the only, are going to be destroyed. So, so that could great. be all mine. I think right am now I, it's all yours. It's all, it. Yeah, it would be all my songs, which. Um, That's right. So unless you're going to use that subdominant right now, I don't know why you'd play it. <laughs> so we'll back it I up. I mean, Mr. Fixer can destroy it. <clears throat> Mr. Fixer may as well destroy something from an ongoing card yeah but i feel like again this is after all that talk about like we well, don't necessarily need to use arcane cadence i think this is a good time to use it because it'll give me some some more stuff at least in my hand um sure. for next turn so let's uh oh, what did not, i do also not, it was not a bad play either or playing the bell if you play the bell then you could use both sides of the syncopated onslaught that's true so that would be Another damage. Yeah, but what am I going to deal damage to since you're going to be taking them both out, right? Sure. But, I mean, you have it for next time. I don't know. I mean, Arcane Cades is not a bad play either. I'm not yeah. saying it's a bad play. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying it's not an automatic play. Right. All right. Um, man, Polyphoric Flare. That's a card that I always feel like I want to use, but I never use it because it damages myself. Um, let's see. Pipes, I don't have any. It's very powerful when he's very set up. Yeah, I don't have any melodies in play. Sadistic dissonance. I don't have any. Um, it's a decent accompany. If I get that might be bell. good to have uh, on her other side. If a bunch of damage reduction. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put sadistic dissonant in my hand, and I'm gonna top Vernal Sonata. Then I will uh, bottom that, trash the pipes. And we'll play out a Vernal Sonata so we can get some. Because I have another, I believe I still have another Vernal Sonata, yeah. And then that way, um, we have it, like, after all of our ongoings get destroyed, uh, Vernal Sonata can help us get some of them back, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Visionary, card on the top. Uh, all right, yep, yeah, I, can, I can do a Precognition, that's fine. Can help us avoid the Dark Heroes. Do I want any of those? I don't think so. Chris Ronway asks, what happened to all the damage all the time? Uh, not against myself. Come on. Mm. What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I guess for now, for what power to use, like Mr. Fixer is going to, he can destroy those on his turn, so it doesn't really matter. Um, 
Yeah, so I guess it's basically Wraith. Uh, you could either infrared eyepiece or I, I would could stealth or say or stealth, sure. But I think I did stealth, so I don't think I really need it. Uh, she is going to do uh, each non-villain target two psychic damage at the end of the villain turn, and then play two cards. Um, yeah, or use visionary's power to have someone draw. Actually, we know if you if you have the wraith draw cards, she's going to get an impromptu invention because <laughs> I All put right. it on top. So yeah, let's just do that then. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, I can use Infrared IP. So I was like, why did you do me and not the Visionary? But I can draw a card via Infrared IPs. And we can have a Toy Master instead. That sounds good. They said, you're my nemesis. Well, you can see it right there in the nemesis icon. It's true. All right, so yeah, so four Ongoing is going to be destroyed, so it makes no sense for me to play an Ongoing. So I'm going to uh, put out Toolbox, draw some more cards, and then destroy one of your Ongoings. Do it. They're going to go, in. They're going to go anyway. And goodbye. Oh, more temporal events. I don't... There's three in the trash. I don't think we need to worry about this. Yeah, I agree. And so who's going to take... Yeah, Visionary's going to take the extra damage unless we let the Dreamer take it. Uh, she's she's going to take an extra two unless we want to let the Dreamer take one. Yeah, I mean... It's up to you. In one of the games I played against Dreamer, like I said, I got her down to two and I still won. So um, yeah, I mean you have wiggle room, and we do have the Argent Adept. So. We do have the Argent Adept. So yeah, I think we just let her take it. You have to be careful playing cards like Combat Stance against the Dreamer. You might kill her accidentally. Yes. And there she goes. All right. She hits us, gets some nemesis damage. So I don't know if you mentioned, but this is not the new artwork for the Dreamer. I did, yes. Yeah. So this is just the, the artwork right off of the card, so you probably recognize it. Um, there will be, obviously, new artwork, as there is with everything. Uh, it's just that, you know, we haven't quite gotten it uh, yet. Obviously, Greater Than Games have been a little busy with the villains coming in. We got pretty lucky with those projection drops here. All right. Um, we were. I think I was going to twist the ether on her this turn. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And uh, I kind of want to keep that suggestion too, so I'm going to get rid of one of these mind spikes. And all right, Wraith. Uh, yeah, I think I can ditch an infrared eyepiece. I always have to read. I, I'm never going to have all his cards memorized, so I always, I always have to read them again. <laughs> Someday you will. Someday. All right. One player may play a card now. That's Alacritus of Dominant Order. Yeah. yeah they, hmm. King Caden, Sadistic Dissonant. Destroy an instrument. I don't have any instruments in play right now. And it's a hard... Tell you what I would discard. I would Either probably get rid of Inventive Cadence Preparation. Or the bell. Oh, yeah? But that's me. Yeah, so I, all is are all my stuff. Yeah, all my songs are gone. So the bell isn't really yeah, useful. You have to nothing me. in play. Yeah, so we'll get rid of the bell. Uh, and I've got dual crowbars. I think I'm gonna lose harmony. I'm not likely to get up to that point. My favorite, my favorite uh, build for Arjun Adept is tons of card, extra card plays. So I love inventive preparation and lacquer subdominant combos. All right, so we're gonna twist the dreamer. And let's see. 
you know what you're doing for Wraith, and he's got enough. Unless, yeah. uh, unless you, unless uh, Mr. Fixer really wants it, I was, I'll just uh, enlighten myself. No, go for it. All right. Like we have more than enough damage to take out these projections. Oh, and I get a precognition. All right, and we'll get rid of that mental divergence since, uh, as we discussed earlier, it's probably not quite that useful. Oh, and I draw a cerebral hemorrhage. All right, good. So she's set up to really help out uh, coming along in the next couple turns. So that's good. All right, Wraith is ready to rock. But is she ready to roll? Also that. So I don't know if everybody here knows this, but Handelabra Games has had four, essentially four different offices. And one of the offices that we were in uh, a couple of years ago was in a place in here in Cleveland called the Agora. And, and I mentioned this, this is gonna become clear why I'm mentioning this in a moment. The Agora, is an office building that's attached to a concert venue. And it is in that office building that the legend has it, the term rock and roll was coined. Uh, the, the theater there was where a lot of early rock, quote unquote, rock bands uh, sort of made their name. And the offices were where the, the recording, you know, sort of executives were. And it is rumored that that is the building within which the term rock and roll was invented. And we had an office there for six months. And why did you bring that up? Because we were talking about rocking and rolling. Okay. You said she was ready to rock. I said, is she ready to roll? And rock and roll is where... Is that's the, a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> All right. So uh, so now we're, we have the, the devil's bargain here. Uh, do we go with the violent nightmares and possibly get a dark hero anyway? Or do we just put out the dark hero? I think I'm going for violent nightmares. All right. Dark hero is rough. So, yes, it's a chance, but it's a chance I'm willing to take. And we'll see what happens. We have enough firepower to deal with it if we have a disc out, so. Okay, so let's but see. now we know that two of them won't come out, so there's that. That is true. So we have seven hit points, 15 hit points, 13 hit points, and 12 hit points. And two cards under the Dreamer, and we need to get eight cards under her to win the game. So let's see here. Um, and I have nothing out. Uh, Lacrida Subdominant. One player may play one card now. Yeah, that might be worthwhile. If I can do that and then get out. Um, and then play Arcane Cadence on top of it. Or even Vernal Sonata, honestly. Because we all have pretty full trash at this point. Yep. What do you think? Uh, Alacritus into Vernal Sonata? Sure. All right. Heal up a bit. All right. And I think I'm going to get back... I think I have a rest of the mind in hand. Yes, I do. All right, so I think I would just skip. There's other stuff you probably want more, like another twist of ether or decoy projection or a cocoon if it gets bad. <laughs> um, unless there's something I don't know what are those. Yeah, want. I'm gonna take the cerebral hemorrhage because we're getting two more projections out next turn and having something, at least yeah at least so something that can help with that I think is probably sure. gonna be helpful. I'll just take that impromptu invention back. Keep playing that every turn. Yeah, alright. Let's see. What do I have in hand? I've got an Arcane Cadence, a Sadistic Dissonant, and an Inventive Preparation. I actually wouldn't mind getting that Inspiring Supertonic back, I think. What else? What are the other options? Yeah, Supertonic would be good. Yeah. Especially because we have some, like, we have amped up throwing knives going and stuff so and I don't want any of those I don't think uh, I guess I could take bloody knuckles sure 
Yeah, see, this is one of those situations, again, where you talk about my play style. The devil you know is almost always going to be better than the devil you don't, unless there's something, like, really specific that you need, or there's absolute garbage in your trash. Um, I will almost always take a card that deals damage under those circumstances. <laughs> All right. I think I am going to... <clears throat> FK two seconds. Oh. Okay. I think I'm just going to charge... Or actually, I'm going to toolbox and then use that. Destroy that. Take out the Toy Master. We haven't seen a single environment target. That's true. It's all been lost in the past. And, well, that kind and, of stuff. Uh, yeah. So what do you think? Should we deal her uh, five damage? Yeah, we could just lose right now. <laughs> It would be a very educational scenario. <laughs> Here's how you lose to the dreamer immediately. Stout barrel. Oh, and here we have Matthew Hayes trying to snipe the dreamer. I think we have to redirect this or we lose. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, Visionary is hurting. So I think this is a, a another bonus for me pulling that wide area effect damage because it means um, she might sort of do some damage and then bow out. So we got an ape, illusory demon. Let's have her hit the environment first. Increase it. Actually, we should have hit the barrel first. It doesn't matter. The barrel's not going to die, so... Actually, it redirects to the barrel, yeah, so it's not really going to matter. Then the barrel will go down. And I think, actually, she's not going to kill the visionary, is she? I, I just feel paranoid that she might kill the visionary, but she won't because it'll be three with the net. It'll just be two, so... I think choose for me is okay, but we can do it first. If the visionary was going to die, we'd want to hit all the other heroes first, right? Oh, and that, that got smoked bombed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Excellent. I forgot about smoke bombs. Good twist to eat there. Yeah, so some discussion happening uh, about Dark Watch Mr. Fixer and how he compares to uh, regular Mr. Fixer. Yeah. In the chat there. And yeah, I, that's exactly it. I know that it took me a while to learn how to use Mr. Fixer effectively. And then on top of that, then you need to learn how to use Dark Watch Mr. Fixer effectively because it is very different. Yeah. Like, for me, I like Dark, Dark Watch Mr. Fixer is, can be incredibly powerful. Especially if you have a team that can put out cards for him to destroy absolutely. and he can keep his own cards. It's ridiculous. Yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you can get him doing like, you know, 16, 18 damage in a turn easy if you, if yeah. you set him up right and you've got a team that can really effectively help him. Yeah, like at this point, the Wraith is just going to be like putting out mega computers and stuff for Mr. Fixer to destroy while he goes bonkers. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a telekinetic cocoon, but you don't. So let's see here. If I take out the ape, that's gonna kill an ongoing, right? Yeah, but we want to we want to take out the ape. Yeah. He has to be taken out, and the sooner the better. Yeah, the sooner the better. All right. So we'll take out the ape. And what do we think? Uh, let's. Oh, see. it's an equipment, not an ongoing. Yep. Definitely not dual crowbars. So something from the wraith. Um, to be honest, like infrared eyepiece. Like, she's playing three cards a turn. It doesn't really matter that much. So, get rid of that. All right, so Skyrider LP says, love your work. Thank you. 
question, do you plan to include a way for us to view our weekly one-shot comic collection? You can do that right now! If you go into the weekly one-shot, you will, now that we are on week two, you will see arrows that will allow you to bounce back and forth between all the weekly one-shots. As we build up more and more weekly one-shots, we are planning on giving you a way, possibly, to view them in like a grid or some other way where you can see more than one on the screen. But as it is right now, you'll be able to back, you know, go back and forth with arrows through whichever ones you have collected. Obviously, we're only in week two of the weekly one shot at this point, so there's only two possible ones you could have. Uh, but as we move forward with more and more, um, you know, this time next year, we'll have 52 of them. So, uh, yeah, there, there will definitely be probably more than one way to, to view. So, all right. Uh, who else should We're I We're going to kill here? all these, so it doesn't really matter. doesn't really matter? All right, so I'll hit the Illusory Demon. And the toy. Or maybe should I go after Mr. Uh, Matthew Hayes? What do you think? Sure. And if she is not long for this world, is there somebody else that may be Enlightenment? I could probably enlighten the Argent Adept. If you enlighten the Wraith, she'll get an impromptu invention. That's more equipment for Mr. Fixer to destroy. And actually, I might just put out a bunch of mega computers at this point to uh, keep the environment from doing bad things to us. Oh yes, we have to destroy an ongoing when we destroy that. So, Black Curtis it is. Unless you want to do it later. Ah, no, it's fine. Okay. I think I might have just seen a visual bug. It looked like when the Illusory Demon came up on the left side of the screen, it did not have the HP... Uh, violator. It only had just the number. Okay. If we see that again, I will uh, try and grab a screenshot. Um, Alright, let's see here. Argent Adept. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, finding some sort of heal power might be handy. Yeah, I mean, my uh, healing her card hasn't come out yet. Let's, so what's Arcane Cadence? What do we got here? Vernal Sonata, Arcane, Alacritus, and two Instrumental Conjurations. Yeah, so I think... I think I'm gonna play... Oof. Yeah, see? Hmm. I think I want to play that Vernal Sonata. And we just killed the, uh, the Alacritus. So let's go ahead and I'll hand Arcane. I'll top deck Alacritus. I'm gonna get rid of these instrumental conjurations and I'm gonna play the Vernal Sonata. And we'll get that impromptu invention back. <laughs> So Gurudine asks, so what is the idea with Wraith's design? Why write rap white wrappings? Love the look, be curious about the design process. Uh, unfortunately, we are not the right people to ask that question. <laughs> uh, the artist uh, is Adam Rebataro. He's with Greater Than Games, and um, he would be the one to ask that question. Uh, and he's not around. Um, let's see. She has five hit points. I mean, my gut tells me to take either Cerebral Hemorrhage or Mind Spike, but I'm open. I mean, Rest of the Mind isn't going to be very useful with her with such low hit points. Yeah, like, to be honest, I wouldn't have taken a card off the deck last time. I yeah. would be trying trying to get Telekinetic Equipment. But if you don't want to do that, then that's your call. Yeah, that's not how I roll. Like, having her stay alive and keeping that... Uh, Twist the ether out is more valuable than her being dead. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, all right, let's see. What can I do for Argent Adept? I already pulled that a uh, 
I'm gonna draw Alacrity Subdominant. So it doesn't mean I shall... You put one on top, you won't draw it. Well, if I put Alacrity Subdominant on top, I will. Yes, and then you'll draw another <laughs> I'll one. I'll draw two of them in a row. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna skip. And I'm gonna skip. Uh, and I have nothing to vocalize. Whoa! I just felt like doing it even though it wasn't gonna do anything. All right, I have three targets to kill, so I have to play charge. Charge it up. Goes our twisted ether because we didn't play another ongoing. Ah. And I will ditch, I think, one of these mega computers. Actually, since I am getting. Well, what do I have in my hand? Maybe I'll keep the mega computers and ditch something else. The throwing knives, I think. Oh, and he's going to shoot everyone, except he's not because of Mega Computer. Zero damage to everything. Love it. All right, so we only need to get one more projection under her for... For the win. For the at win. At the start of her turn. Right. And so that's good. All right, smoke bombs. Yeah, it's only gonna be a one-time smoke bomb. So actually, yeah, we can just send it over to the Wraith and they'll be zero. The Dreamer's difficulty rating is three, to answer Mickey019 from the chat. I think unless the environment does something foolish, we should be okay. Uh, the Wraith can take this. Oh, and now the Mr. Fixer can't deal damage. Maybe we should have done that the other way. Uh, let's go back right. to the end of, end of... I forgot that the Whipicorn was out and was going to hit the other choice. All right, so choose for me. Uh, the Wraith... We need Mr. Fixer to deal damage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, choose for me. And now, yeah, choose Mr. Fixer. And then this will hit the Wraith. She can't deal damage, which isn't as bad. All right. So as we said, we really only need to get one of them under her and then survive the environment turn to make this happen. Yes. So Which Mr. Fixer can just do, like, by himself. Oh, yeah? Basically. Uh, not quite. Actually, I could overdrive. Well, I mean, uh, if I Cerebral Hemorrhage, I can hit all three of them, and then yeah. you can sort of pick... Yeah, do some damage. That's that's quite, quite all right. Um... Yeah... Should I hit Tyler Hayes? Hayes will still not do anything. No? Because okay. Of, he, the mega computers will stop Tyler Got Hayes. It. Okay. And you could let Wraith draw her impromptu invention. <laughs> I guess actually if you want, well, he, she's not going to be able to, I guess she can do something else. Um, she won't be able to deal damage, but I can get another mega computer. <laughs> So there's that. Lou Dolphin says, John recommending that Jeremy do damage. Is that the dream? <laughs> that is the dream. Huh. Three maker computers in play. And then I can do inventory barrage and destroy the dreamer. <laughs> For 12 damage. 
<laughs> I think I'll just get rid of Tyler Hayes. I have nothing else to do. Yeah, if you have a way for... Yeah, you could have... If you can have Mr. Fixer play Overdrive or Charge, that would be probably very effective. Uh, let's see. Yep, I can do that. Yeah, actually, I think if I play Overdrive, then I can play Salvage Yard next turn. Do some ridiculous things. Yeah, Salvage Yard is awesome. Actually, I might have too much to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I can destroy some things that we're not going to need anymore, like micro-targeting. And then I can do that again. Bit of overkill. And you're not going to need Electrus so dominant anymore, so I'll destroy that. <laughs> it's very efficient. Uh, yeah, two targets is one health. I don't really need to do anything. Um, why don't we just end the game with piles of cards in our hands? Everyone gets all their equipment cards. You get an equipment card, and you get an equipment card, and you get an equipment card. And we'll destroy utility belt. I'm not gonna destroy my dual crowbars. They have been awesome all game long. Yeah, that's pretty amazing with a Dark Watch Mr. Fixer. Yeah, it's ridiculous doing so much damage every turn. Well, just, that, just that you've had a card. I think that was your first play of the entire game, and it has been out the whole time. Yep. And there it is, That's, folks. There you That's go. That's game. So obviously, there will be a cool ending screen for her. Yes, there will be a much cooler ending screen for the Visionary than you, what you see here. Um, all right, John, pontificate for a minute. i got to run to the bathroom. All right. Uh... Questions from the chat room. Ask some questions. The Wraith has three PS3s and three mega computers. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we stopped the sheriff from shooting at the little girl. I'm not sure why he would do that. <laughs> why would Sheriff Pratt shoot at a child? Because she was the non-environment target with the lowest HP or the, the non- Whatever his whatever his condition is, that's why. He just he's compelled to check the category of a target and uh, and shoot at it. Non-hero target, I think. How did Wraith get so many computers into the past? Uh, these are micro mega computers. They they're in a backpack, I'm sure. What are Hand Elaborate's favorite villains? Hmm. I would say my favorite villain is probably the Ennead because uh, it has a lot of variety each game. And you'll have to ask Jeremy when he gets back. Pratt's deep dark secret, shooting at children. Yeah, so. Uh, we've also got some more villains coming up in Shattered Timelines that you guys may have heard of. Uh, we've got uh, Iron Legacy. Uh, who is a future shattered version of Legacy, a dark a dark hero, if you will. We've also got La Capitan, a time-traveling uh, villain, and Kismet, who is a trickster. So watch out for those in future weeks. We're going to be showing off something new every week, hopefully. All right, I'm back. Welcome. What did I miss? Uh, questions about why is Sheriff Pratt shooting at children? <laughs> 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 oh, Pratt. 
All right, so... Um...